In this video, we're going to install the back gears onto the headstock. Eccentric lever or the back gear lever, quill gear, eccentric shaft surrounded by the quill sleeve, and the quill pinion. The eccentric shaft is just that. The last inch or inch and a half is eccentric from the rest of the shaft. It's not aligned with the center. So as you move this shaft, it will engage and disengage the back gears. You can also see a groove cut in the shaft to distribute the grease pumped between the shaft and the eccentric sleeve. Grease up the end of the shaft and slide on the eccentric bushing. Notice there's a pin on the bushing. This is used to limit the movement of the shaft. Slide on the eccentric lever and locate the taper pin. And drive it home. The shaft is now ready to go into the eccentric sleeve and mount the entire assembly, including the back gears, onto the headstock. Slide the eccentric shaft into the headstock and into the sleeve containing the back gears. I never took the back gears off the sleeve. It wasn't necessary as I did the restoration. Tap the eccentric bushing in, and there's a small hole in the bushing that you line up. The hole is put in the bushing at the factory, and it provides perfect alignment um, with this set screw so that the back gears are engaged properly with the spindle. The bushing on the other side is the same way, and you can see here the little uh, hole. I've marked it with a sharpie so I can try to line that up as I insert this bushing. Now this bushing is a little harder to get in because you're trying to put it into the casting and around that shaft at the same time. So it's kind of a tight fit. Align the bushing and then uh, put in the locking screw. Now that I look at this video, uh, it probably would be easier to put this bushing in first and then put the shaft on. Well, you guys can learn from my mistake. Once everything is in place, the last step is to insert the grease fitting and pump that sleeve full of grease. Then I replace the grease fitting with a cap screw. Before we leave this video, I want to talk about how the back gears work. Normally, this plunger is in the up position, which locks the bull gear with the spindle cone. So as the belt drive moves the spindle cone, it moves the bull gear, which is locked to the spindle. So the spindle and the cone move exactly the same speed all the time, as you can see. All right, that's enough. When the plunger is in the down position, it disengages the bull gear from the spindle cone. And now the spindle cone through the belt drive spins and nothing else moves. The, the spindle cone is now being moved by the belt drive independent of the spindle. Now the back gears can be engaged through the eccentric lever. And you can see how both the big quill gear is engaged with the cone pinion gear. And on the far side, the quill gear is engaged with the bull gear that turns the spindle. So you can see the power here moving from the cone pinion to the quill gear through the eccentric sleeve, which acts like a shaft, turning the quill pinion, which turns the bull gear and now moves the spindle. With back gears engaged, the spindle moves seven times slower. So there you go. We're all done.